Hi, I'm Brian Curry, tutoring in high school biology. Today's topic, prokaryotes. Now I say prokaryotes because we're going to cover both domain bacteria and domain archaea in this lesson. We're going to start with archaea. Prokaryotes in domain archaea are known as archaebacteria, and they're pretty weird. Luckily you don't need to know too much about them for high school biology because we don't know too much about them ourselves. Alright, first up, none of them have peptidoglycan in their cell walls, but everything in domain bacteria does. Archaea bacteria live in some really strange environments. Some can live in hot, really hot environments, up to 105 degrees Celsius. Some live in pHs of 0.4. That's more than 10 times as acidic as stomach acid. And some of them live in salt concentrations 10 times saltier than salt water. Most cells just pop if they're put into that. So, very strange. And that's archaea bacteria. On to domain bacteria. The prokaryotes here can also be referred to as U bacteria. That's EU and bacteria, spelled just like that. All right, now we can identify these in a number of ways. First up is by shape. There are three different shapes for U bacteria. First up, bacilli. These are rods, cocci, spheres, and spirilla. Well, spirals. We can also classify these bacteria through the gram stain. You might do this in the lab. You take a colony of bacteria and apply a violet dye, then an alcohol wash, and then a red dye. If you end up with violet bacteria at the end, you have a gram-positive colony. This means that the peptidoglycan is on the outside of the bacteria's cell walls. The violet dye will then attach to the peptidoglycan and can't be washed out with the alcohol. Red dye, too bad. Violet dye got there first. Alright, if you end up with a colony of red bacteria at the end, that means peptidoglycan is on the inside of the cell wall. So the violet dye cannot take, and the alcohol wash just takes it right out. The red dye was the last thing there, so of course it ends up red. We can also look at how bacteria metabolize. And I have four words here that are kind of big. Don't worry, they pretty much tell you their definitions. Chemoheterotrophs. These bacteria take in chemicals and use them to create energy and their own cell structures. Chemo, chemical, and heterotroph, taking in their food. Next up are the photoheterotrophs. Photo, light, and heterotroph, taking in their own food. These ones use light to create energy, but take in chemical compounds, organic compounds, to make their cell structures. Alright, then we have chemoautotrophs. These ones are interesting. They take in organic compounds and then, in a photosynthesis-like process, will actually create their own energy in cell structures. Photoautotrophs, well, they perform photosynthesis a lot like plants. Now, we can also look at how these cells will release energy, even after they've got their food and metabolized it, they need to release it. They're first off obligate aerobes. These need air to release energy. If they don't have enough oxygen, no dice. Obligate anaerobes. These cannot release energy when there's oxygen. And lastly, facultative anaerobes. These can either release energy with or without oxygen, depending on what's there or what's not. Alright, last up we're going to look at how bacteria reproduce. There's asexual reproduction, which is just binary fission. We start out with a little bacteria, it gets bigger, it get, gets bigger, and then it splits off into two bacteria. It's binary fission. Sexual reproduction is something interesting. Bacteria go through what is known as conjugation. In it, we take two bacteria and they form a pilus, plural pili. And this is basically a bridge between the two cells. And they will pass genetic information from their plasmids back and forth. This way, they've changed their genetic information and reproduced, creating a new bacteria. This can make harmless bacteria harmful if they meet up with the right bacteria. But yes, that's reproduction. To recap, archaea bacteria belong to domain archaea and live in very strange environments, some very salty, some very hot, some very acidic. U bacteria are from domain bacteria. All of them have peptidoglycan lichen in their cell walls. There's three basic shapes of those bacteria, bacilli, which are rod-shaped, cocci, which are spherical, and spirilla, which are spiral. These can also be classified through the gram stain. You apply a violet dye, then an alcohol wash, and then a red dye. If you end up with a violet colony, these are gram positive and have peptidoglycan on the outside of their cell walls. If you end up with a red colony, these are gram negative and have peptidoglycan on the insides of their cell walls. You can also look at how these bacteria metabolize. Chemoheterotrophs take in chemical compounds and make energy and their own cell structures. Photoheterotrophs use light to create energy, but also need to take in organic compounds to make cell structures. Chemoautotrophs take in chemical compounds and perform a photosynthesis-like method to create energy in their cell structures. Lastly, photoautotrophs will perform photosynthesis much like plants. You can also look at energy release. 
Obligate aerobes need oxygen to release energy. Obligate anaerobes cannot release energy when there's oxygen. And lastly, facultative anaerobes can perform both aerobic and anaerobic energy release. Bacteria can reproduce in one of two ways. Asexual reproduction is called binary fission. The bacteria simply gets larger and splits off into two cells, much like mitosis. Then there's sexual reproduction, in which two bacteria form a pilus, a bridge between the two cells, over which they exchange genetic information and ultimately create new bacteria. All right, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Freer. See you next time.